Uh, today, I will talk about the native feeling, and we will discuss how you can make your app feel truly native, and like what it actually means. Does it work? Okay. No, it doesn't. So, my name is Oscar, and I'm a senior software engineer at Callstack. I'm a React Native core contributor. I've created React Native for Vision OS, uh, React Native bottom taps, and some other libraries. Uh, you can find me under these handles on X and GitHub. So let's start by defining what's native. We have a native speaker, which is someone who learned the language from birth. We've got a native cuisine, which is a traditional food from a particular place. And then we've got native feeling. And we can define it as how closely the app's user experience aligns with the platform design patterns, behaviors, and interactions. And users of different platforms have different expectations. And then they can expect from your app to behave what others app, app behaves in their system. So for example, iOS users are used to swiping to go back. And Android users are used to clicking on the back button. Although in newer versions, there's also a swipe to go back on Android, some users are still used to using it. So if you create an app that doesn't do this, let's say you implement your totally own custom navigator that doesn't respect any native uh, principles, you might get your users a, a little annoyed that they have to change their navigation pattern and what they are used to. And there are so much more of those little details that are extremely important to get right. Next up, users of iPads. They expect your app to fill the whole screen, not be just a small rectangle in the middle. Also, TV users, they expect your app to be focusable with the remote controller and navigate it smoothly. So in this presentation, I will try to answer this exact question. Why native feeling matters in app development? And I hope at the end, you understand what it actually means and what's behind those buzzwords. So there is a paradox that you can build a non-native feeling app with native languages. So saying that you should always use SwiftUI or Jetpack Compose or whatever, in my opinion, is wrong. So to prove this, let's play a little game. Uh, in the next slide, I will show you like two videos. And your role is to guess which one is React Native. So you should play, oh, pay close attention to like all the UI elements. OK, now it starts. So like, it's, it's smooth. <laughs> it's just the uh, preview that we have here. But believe me, it's smooth. But play, play close attention to the UI elements. OK, this is the option number one. And this is option number two. And remember, one of, it, one of these options is React Native. The second one is SwiftUI. And OK, who thinks option number one is React Native? OK, so this is the top bar, and the top bar is all like translucent. And who thinks option number two is React Native? OK. And option number one is React Native. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people got it wrong. And it's using uh, React Native screens and React Native bottom tabs for the native components on top and bottom. Uh, and shout out to these GitHub users for creating this. Uh, example. So my take is that the technology doesn't matter as much as the user experience we offer. Maybe uh, except this thing, which like doesn't render native views at all. Uh, so let's move on. So let's address the most important question. Is React Native actually native? And even though there are some users on Twitter that would say it's not because they read some blog post or whatever, it's, it's actually native. It's built using C++, Kotlin, Java, and Objective-C. And there is some Swift popping into the code base. Uh, and it's rendering the same native views uh, that, for example, a UI kit app would, and also on Android app would underneath. So where are the rules that we can follow for each platform to get the native feeling? So starting off with Apple, we've got the Human Interface Guidelines, a comprehensive guide explaining the do's and don'ts of their platforms. So let's take a closer look at what's in there. 
So in one of their sections, they outline the navigation and search. And they go into uh, best practices and platform considerations uh, in this guide. So let's take a closer look at the tab bar document. So after the outline, they show you some best practices. So for example, use a tab bar to support navigation, not to provide actions, or don't disable the tab bar buttons, even if their content is unavailable. And they also have some platform considerations. So for example, how your tab bar should look like on, on iPadOS, how it should look like on VisionOS, TVOS, etc. There is also a great page that tells you all about navigation bars and the navigation stack that you are probably already familiar with. And there is also a great page about presentation, outlining action sheets, alerts, scroll views, and more. Now let's see what Google has to offer in their material design document. And indeed, they also tell you all about navigation with elements like navigation bar, app drawer, and navigation rail. And they also describe checkboxes, chips, date, beakers, and a lot more. Um, OK, so when, we, when you get into each component, they tell you how you should use it. And they tell you also some best practices around it. So for example, the navigation bar should have at most five items, according to Google, or it shouldn't scroll horizontally. So I highly encourage you to go through these docs, and uh, this should make your app uh, UI and UX a lot better already. So now that we know about the guidelines and what components they offer, how can we use them in our apps? So when you develop a native app, it's pretty easy. You can just import a native platform SDK, uh, for example, UIKit, uh, or from, from uh, Android, you can import material components and just use them. So for example, to get a smooth navigation stack, you can use UI navigation controller. And to implement tabs, you can use UI tab bar controller. And the same goes for Android. You just import already provided views uh, from system libraries. So what about React Native? And it's a bit more complicated there than just importing a first party package. And we have to depend on third party libraries. Thankfully, there are a lot of them. So one of them is, of course, uh, React Navigation, which combined with React Native screens underneath exposes native navigation primitives that allow you to have native feeling navigation across your app's screens. But, uh, and there are a bunch of other libraries exposing native components, and many of them are developed by Colstack. So you can check a list of available React Native libraries on React Native directory. But what about the tabs? If you go to React Navigation website and look for the bottom tab navigator, you would find that it looks the same on Android and iOS. And this is not what we saw in the interface guidelines from both Apple and Google, where tab bars are completely different. And this is how they should look like on both Android and iOS. And if we want to have a native listening app, it can be just iOS, since React Native targets both platforms. And then I thought about this uh, for a second. Why, for all these years, nobody created this? Maybe it's not possible. But then I sat down one weekend and created it. Uh, <laughs> so this is how React Native Bottom Tabs was born. Obviously, it took way longer than a weekend to fully implement it. But it uses native navigation primitives. So uh, UI uh, tab bar controller and, material, uh, and the navigation bar from material components. And it supports smooth navigations, uh, so smooth animations between the views. So it's also driven by the native side. And thanks to it being native, it supports different appearances per platform. So for example, it looks different on iPadOS, where it can be on the top and also be a sidebar. On VisionOS, it's floating on the left side. On tvOS, it can be navigated with the TV remote. And on macOS, it's a sidebar, uh, which, you can, which is, feels familiar from the Finder app. And the library is designed to be a drop-in replacement for the JavaScript bottom tabs. So you've probably, probably already seen this code. It creates a bottom tab navigator uh, using React Navigation slash bottom tabs. And to replace it with native bottom tabs, you just replace the import and create the native bottom tab navigator. Of course, there are trade-offs. 
And because this library is native, you can't pass custom React elements as the tabbar icons. It has to be either a static file or a, or a remote URL. But the icon can be any image, including SVG. And one of the most requested features was the ability to render a custom tabbar. So if you uh, want to ignore everything written in the interface guidelines, like you still can, and you can still leverage the native transitions uh, between the views. So why does using native components matter? So here is a comparison of the JavaScript bottom tabs and how they handle the picture in picture. So this picture in picture comes from YouTube when you exit it. And for example, uh, when we have the native view, it respects that it's there. So it doesn't overflow the tab bar. With JavaScript bottom tabs, uh, it doesn't know that the tab bar is there because this is a custom like React element. But with the native views, uh, it can uh, move away from the bottom uh, navigation. And there is another example on Android uh, where native bottom tabs respect the material view color set in the uh, system settings. So for example, if the user sets its favorite color to orange, our app can respect it and also change the bottom navigation bar to be uh, this color. And this is already supported in React Native bottom tabs. And the library supports both uh, React Navigation and Explore Outer. And you can read about the integrations on their blog posts or in the library documentation. So I highly encourage you to give it a try. Uh, you can install it using this command, and you can scan the QR code to give it a start on GitHub. We are getting close to 1K, <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> okay. One more minute to scan, and. Because we already use it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. For a long time. Okay. I have it in uh, every app I ever made, almost. Oh, that's great. Okay, let's, let's move on. Uh, so uh, let's move to another library uh, that enhances your native feeling, which is Zigo by Fernando Rojo. And it exposes native menus for Android, uh, iOS, and web. And you can find these all around the system. So users are already familiar with them, and you should use them. Another big thing, bottom sheets. And you are probably familiar with the Gorhom's bottom sheet uh, library, and I think it's great. But if you want to have a fully native experience, it's probably not you what you should be looking at. In one of the blog posts about native feel, Samuel from Blue Sky uh, pointed out that they were having a lot of issues with this library, and mainly with accessibility, but not only, because this library from Gorhom uses reanimated to implement the sheet. And they ended up creating their own custom native implementation of the uh, UIKit sheet. But uh, there are other alternatives, like React Native True Sheet, or the ones that provided in React Native Screens, uh, where you can use it inside of React Navigation when you set the presentation of a screen to be a form sheet or a page sheet. OK, so let's move on to another topic, animations. And there are a lot of basic terms everyone tells you about when they do presentation about the native feeling. So for example, always animate at 60 frames per second, use reanimated or at least the native driver uh, in the animated API, use interaction manager, which allows you to schedule a long running operation after any interactions or animations finish. But I want to bring your attention to another topic. So. Uh, let's say we have this code uh, that does a for loop to one million and console logs just chilling. And then we render this button uh, in our app. And the user presses this button and then immediately tries to press the go back button. So what do you think will happen? Option A, user, go user goes back. Option B, app crashes. Or option C, app is stuck. So who thinks is the option A? OK. Who thinks is the option B, that the app will crash? OK, and who thinks is the option C? All right. So yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> this is the option C. Uh, you can't do anything on the JavaScript thread until the loop is finished. And this is how the thread's rep representation would look like at the moment, obviously <laughs> simplified. 
but our do something function would be blocking the execution on JavaScript thread until it finishes counting uh, to one million. And unfortunately, even though we are using native navigation primitives, the event needs to go through JavaScript to trigger a dispatch to navigate back through React navigation. Uh, but we could still, for example, scroll a scroll view because it's, its events are triggered from a native site to JavaScript, but obviously JavaScript will just ignore them because it's busy. So the main takeaway from this is that you should at all costs avoid blocking the JavaScript thread and opt in to using native libraries where possible. For example, if we would move this whole uh, big for loop to the native side, we could spawn a separate C++ thread that doesn't block the JavaScript uh, thread. So uh, this is how the uh, computation would look like now, where the JavaScript thread is empty, and we would spawn a new thread uh, that would count to a million, and we could still interact uh, with the app. And then JavaScript could await and, uh, the result, and we could resolve the promise on the native side once the calculation is finished. But you most likely don't need it for most calculations, but it's good to know that the possibility to do so is there. All right, so a quick recap. First of all, follow uh, guidelines provided by platforms, so either human interface guidelines or material design guidelines. Use libraries that are exposing native UI elements and ensure that your app feels native on both platforms and not only iOS, as many of us do. Uh, so yeah, thank you. <laughs>